Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see all your faces, everyone who's walking in, everyone online. I don't see you, but hello. Um, yeah, good morning. We're gonna sing together, worship together. Um, why don't you stand? We're gonna begin our time singing the song, This I Believe. And if you're a uh, part of, you've been around and part of the Peace Portal, community, um, you're going to be familiar with this song. Um, and if you're new to church, welcome. Um, but yeah, this song is um, written based on what is called the Apostles' Creed. And I want to read that for us before we begin, which is it's essentially what we believe here, uh, who we believe God is. So it says this, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to death. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic slash Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is what we believe. So let's, let's sing that together, church. Our Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God. Conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection that we And our defender suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light. Forever seated high. I believe in God. I believe in the virgin's birth. 
see under all you can join us there so let's read eternal God you are the power behind all things behind the energy of the storm behind the heat of a million suns eternal God you are the power behind all minds behind the ability to think and reason behind all understanding of the truth Eternal God, you are the power, the cross of Christ. Behind the weakness, the torture, and the death. Behind unconquerable love. Eternal, Eternal God, God, we worship, worship and adore you. of time He who made every living thing Behold Him He who heard humanity cry Left His throne to wake as a child He became like the least of us Behold Him Jesus Son of God, Messiah, the Lamb, the Rory Lion, oh, be still and behold Him. So he who died, he who died with sinners and saints, the blue. 
Pray with me, please. Father, we acknowledge that there's lots of things that can fill up our vision in these days. Perhaps it's plans uh, to get away still before the summer concludes, or, or perhaps it's hopes to get away in the fall. Easy for our vision to be focused on the Delta variant and what's going to be happening there. Our vision's drawn to the tragedy that's unfolding in Afghanistan. We can't help but notice the political divide among us and now the upcoming election in our country. Some of us cast our eyes to the storm hitting the Northeast, recognizing that millions of people might be affected. So many places where our vision can find a nesting place. And in each of those challenges, 
And for the ones that continue to be unnamed, personal ones that we hold to, we, we pray that you would, Father, bring your peace and your wisdom, your love, your protection into each of these circumstances and many more. We pray that your church would be present, caring, sacrificing, serving others in very real and practical ways where there is need. But we pray that our vision, that which centers us, that which motivates us, that which directs and instructs us, which informs us about everything else that we might see or anything that we might do. We pray that our heart and our mind would be focused on you and formed by you so that the ways we intersect and interact with all of the complex circumstances of this world would be shaped by the values of your kingdom. May your church be present and in word and deed announce that your kingdom has come in Christ. So come, Holy Spirit. Come this day, come even in this moment and reveal Jesus to us the way, the truth, and the life. And as Bruce comes to speak in us in just a few moments, and as he opens up, his, uh, up your word and introduces Nehemiah to us, we do pray that you would empower him, that you would open up our ears to hear what you are saying to us in these days. Be thou our vision, we pray. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can have a seat if you are here in the room and if you're watching online and you are standing to sing, that's amazing, but you can have a seat as well. Thanks for joining us both in person and online. We're thrilled to be together to get, uh, today as God's church. A couple things that I want to let you know about as we start to think about the fall and um, many of us are starting to put our plans down and our schedules and those sorts of things. One of the things that you're going to be hearing more about in the upcoming weeks is a really exciting prayer walk initiative that we're going to be doing as a whole church, but we're doing it together with a number of other churches in this uh, city, in the Lower Mainland, and um, we're going to try and walk all the streets of South Surrey and White Rock, while others do it in Abbotsford and Vancouver and a number of other different uh, cities. You're going to be hearing more about that. We're going to be inviting you to participate in this intentional week of prayer. But as a little bit of a precursor, this coming Tuesday morning at uh, 7.30 a.m., uh, we're going to be meeting in the church parking lot here at Peace Portal, and we're going to go for a 45-minute walk together, a prayer walk. And we'd love for you to join us. If you would like to, you can go on Online and you can uh, just register to let us know that you're coming. But we look forward to praying together uh, in our city and for our city as we walk together this coming Tuesday morning. And again, as we think about what the fall is going to look like as we prepare for what we hope is a relatively normal fall, but we'll see, um, we'd love to get you plugged into an area of ministry where you can use your gifts to serve others, um, gifts that God has given you to bless others with, uh, whether it's within this community or whether it's outside um, the, these walls and in our city, we want to be a community that serves others in love. And so there's a lot of different ways that you can volunteer as we start to run various ministries and programs again, uh, we need the church to collectively use their gifts to uh, serve one another in love. And there's a lot of different areas. And if you want to go online, there's a banner that looks like this at the top of our website. You can click on that link and you can get all sorts of information about the various places where you might uh, serve this coming fall. And uh, two things that we want to let you know about specifically related to serving because there's some training things going on. First, those of you who walk in and are greeted by people with smiles, um, who can answer questions, uh, new people that are wondering where on earth do I go, where are the washrooms, we need a welcoming presence. And uh, there's a number of people that serve on the welcome team already, but as we begin to do services and more and more people start to show up, well, we need to expand that welcome team. And so... Um, 
Wednesday, September the 1st, there's going to be a training session. Uh, it's an info session as well. If you're, it's, you don't have to commit, but you can at least come and hear what's involved, uh, what the fall's going to look like. And if you want, you can sign up to serve our church and those who are walking through these doors, perhaps for the first time um, this fall on the welcome team. And then another important uh, ministry that you've heard about, our small group ministry. That, that takes us from observing church to experiencing community and experiencing uh, church together. Such an important piece of what it means to be church together is to be known and to know others and do the journey together. And so small groups only take place because there's people willing to facilitate them or lead them. And uh, we're so grateful for those of you who have done that over this last year while we haven't been able to meet together in this room. Um, we're going to continue to um, expand our small groups so that, so that new people, and I'm meeting new people every week here when I'm here, uh, new people have the opportunity to not just experience welcome, which is so important, but actually belonging, which is even more important. Um, for a long-term experience of healthy church. And so uh, if you're interested in uh, just knowing again, knowing what it means to be a small group leader or facilitator, you can come to this and not commit. But uh, those of you who are leading small groups or those of you who are curious about it, please join us on this night and we'll talk a little bit about what we're hoping uh, small groups will be uh, experiencing together uh, through this fall season. And you can head to the website to let us know that you are going to attend either of those two training sessions. Now I'm going to invite you to turn your attention to God's Word as Bruce comes and opens up the Scriptures for us. Lots happening as we start into the fall to be able to do it in person and together. Amazing to be able to come back and, uh, and be part of uh, the church. And, that, and I want to say as well, good morning to all of you here and in the balcony, live streaming online. Great to have you with us this morning. And what a summer of ministry it's been. Uh, as the pastoral team has shared with us about one of their favorite Bible characters. I'm proud of how they've shared their hearts with, uh, with each of us. On July 4th, Pastor Amy started us off with Anna as we look back, and we've heard about Joshua and Elijah, Peter, Mary, Rahab. Last week, Pastor Phil, Simon the Martyr. Next week, we'll hear from one more pastor on. Not going to steal their thunder. You need to come back and listen in to the last, uh, the last Bible character. Well, no pressure, Bruce, as you are the second last. I am the second last in there. You know, as I see the humanitarian tragedy in Afghanistan, the Haitians as they deal with the earthquake, and now I watch my fellow countrymen leave homes in Kelowna and Vernon, Merritt, Logan Lake, and others communities as well. Then I see the numbers rising with the fourth wave. And our niece, Lisa, a mom of five in North Carolina, dealing with long COVID, which is attacking her brain, I can become very anxious, overwhelmed. And I can say, like, what can I do? What can I do? I'm so thankful to live in Canada. I love this country. And yet I can also be anxious as I look into an uncertain future. Uh, with national debt rising and the issue of the residential schools and our indigenous people. And that's only a few concerns. And I also would say pray for the upcoming election. There is a hallway that leads in the Vatican that leads to the Sistine Chapel. It's called the Gallery of Tapestries. And as Denise and I have been there a couple times and we walk through this, uh, you will note, I mean, it's absolutely magnificent with these tapestries hanging on the wall, and then you walk through, and then very shortly thereafter, you're into the Sistine Chapel. And as I was walking here along, I waited for, uh, for the group that we were part of, and Denise, they, were, they moved on, and I looked around, and I wanted to make sure that no guards were watching, and so I kind of leaned around this rope, and I looked behind the tapestry, 
because I wanted to see what the backside of it looked like. And it was, uh, it was threads and stuff. Like it, it, would, it looked nothing like what it was at the front. And so I remember looking around. I watched, kept my eye on the guard so that because he would have given it to me. Uh, and, that, and, uh, and, so the, and then, I, uh, then I looked at the, uh, at the front and it was such a contrast. It was all about perspective. And as I looked for a Bible character to share about, I looked for one who was facing huge national obstacles in a time when his nation had been scattered. Someone who cried out to God and said the same as what I'm saying, Lord, what can I do? Someone who was remarkably uh, able to have the right perspective to pray to the God in heaven in the midst of great turmoil and pressure and then act and lead forward. And I chose Nehemiah. Pray with me. Father, now as we look into your word and we look into the the Nehemiah, the man Nehemiah, I pray that you would speak to us, uh, Holy Spirit, through, uh, through your spirit and what the the message that you want us to, uh, to listen to this morning. And I, uh, I, I pray for each of us here and online in your name. Amen. Well, let's have a background on Nehemiah. We first meet him as he serves in the Persian royal court, and he's a personal cupbearer to the, to the king, to King Artaxerxes in the city of Susa. Now, a cupbearer, a cupbearer was historically an officer of, of high rank in the royal courts. And their duty was to pour and serve the drinks at the royal table. Now, he would guard against poison uh, in the king's cup and was sometimes, he some, was sometimes required to swallow some of the drink before serving it. Now, I trust he, he got some danger pay for doing this. King Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian king attacked and destroyed Jerusalem in 597 BC. And he led many of the Hebrews into captivity in Babylon. And it's interesting that when the exiles were allowed to return home to Judah, uh, they didn't all go at once. And Nehemiah himself remained in his position in this city of Susa, which is about 1,300 kilometers southeast of Jerusalem. Today, the ancient city of Susa is unoccupied. It's actually adjacent to the modern Iranian town of Shush in Iran's Khuzestan province. You can go there and you can see the ruins of Susa. The book of Nehemiah shows us the kind of significant impact just one individual can have on a nation. God uses all manner of people in all manner of places doing all manner of work for his ways. In other words, never discount what God can and will do with your life if you are willing and you ask him to. God is looking for men and women, young and old today, to stand up and say, Lord, here am I. I'm not sure what to do, but here am I. And then he will respond. The story of Nehemiah takes place in 444 B.C. The nation of Israel has been fractured for over 150 years. It appears that King Artaxerxes had a soft place in his heart for the Jews. And they were, uh, had been forced to live away from their homeland. Nehemiah had a dream. What is your dream? What is my dream? You know, you're never too young or too old to dream. Nehemiah longed to return to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall around it in order to provide badly needed protection. And God laid on his heart what he wanted Nehemiah to do, and that was to protect the city of David. So let's pick up this story with a few verses from Nehemiah chapter 1 and chapter 2. And I'm going to read these with you as we we read from God's word. The the words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah. In the month of Kislev, in the 20th year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, 
Hanani, one of my brothers, was a brother of his, came from Judah with some other men. And I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. And that's relating back to Nebuchadnezzar's time. And when I heard these things, I sat down and I wept. For some days I mourned and I fasted and I prayed before the God of heaven. Now, chapter 2. In the month of Nisan in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and I gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before to the king. And he asked me, why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid. But I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? The king said to me, what is it you want? Love this. Then I prayed to the God of heaven and I answered the king. If it pleases the king and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. Much has been written on the leadership qualities of this man. He was a layman, and he responded to God's leading. Dr. Roger Berkman, man that I uh, spent a number of years with, and we traveled internationally together. He was a very good friend, and I miss him every day. He was also a very significant mentor in my life. He often shared with me on his thought and on perspective. And this is Roger at his best. And, he, uh, and I actually use this line when I do training and certification in Berkman. The reality of life is that your perceptions, right or wrong, influence everything else you do. When you get a proper perspective of your perceptions, you may be surprised how many things fall into place. <laughs> I love that phrase. I can hear Roger and I talking about it on international flights as we traveled and spoke together and talked about having the right perspective for what God was up to in our world, but especially in our lives. I have chosen Nehemiah for, primarily for three lessons to help me gain perspective and what God is asking of us and myself at this strategic time. Also for you and I personally and for our church, I want us to ensure, I want to ensure myself that I am seeing the right side of God's tapestry. Lesson number one, Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a builder of broken walls. You know, we know that walls are both positive and negative. And when we put up walls and withdraw from others, then the in impact can be more negative. And yet walls also protect, like Nehemiah's dream here for Jerusalem. They provide structure. They provide purpose. They provide unity. As Nehemiah looked to a city, a city that he loved, he prayed and he asked God for his guidance and what should he do? He asked God to use him to gather his people back together again. You know, the early church was birthed coming out of, a, out of Pentecost during a, a very turbulent time. It was a very dangerous time. It was a very fractured time. And what kept them focused was being together. And we read in Acts chapter 2, verse 46, we read that every day they met together in the temple courts and then broke bread in their homes and God moved. He moved in supernatural ways. As I look at the church today coming out of the pandemic, you know, I, I'm deeply concerned. Yeah, I, I love the local church. I've given much of my later years here uh, to the church. To be, to, be, to, do, to be alongside of it in different ways. There are lessons that we need to pay attention to, <clears throat> which come out of the story of Nehemiah. You know, we so need the right perspective 
as each of us are saying, like, what can I do? Some of you have said that to me, even in this last couple of weeks, as we look out at, the, uh, at what's happening in our country and in the world. <clears throat> Nehemiah knew that the wall of Jerusalem would provide protection. It would be a tangible sign to external nations and people groups. It would be a sign of the presence of Yahweh. It would be a home for exiled Israel and prompt people to start to return who have been scattered. Coming out of this pandemic, we as the local church have been scattered. That word has been mentioned to me a number of times by some of you even in, this, in the congregation here. Yes, Zoom and live streaming have been a help to the church over the past 18 months. However, it can never replace being together on a consistent basis, nor should we ever make it that. When I was meeting with the underground churches in Vietnam and mainland China who met in secret, very covertly, and they took huge risks, I asked them somewhat of a strange question. Now, there was a bit of a method to my madness here, uh, but I wanted to set this up and I wanted because I wanted to hear from them. Uh, I asked them this question. If bringing people together increases the risk, why not each of you just stay in your own homes, stay under the radar, and quietly follow God and let God work through you? They looked at me a bit in shock. And they said through the translator, uh, when we meet in our home churches together, we experience God's supernatural power. It's not because of us, though we so need to support and encourage each other face to face, rather because, and I remember they paused and I was waiting, and then they said, because God has asked us to. And when God asks us to do something and we obey the gates of hell will never stand against us. Boy, it just gave me goosebumps. And and there was a quiet. Church, it is time, it is time to gather, to return, to rebuild our walls, which have been broken and fractured. And then in anticipation, watch God be God and move supernaturally and, and, and bring transformation and together to bring glory to God. And we need the right perspective, don't we? Now, I'm not saying, no, please bear with me here. I'm not saying that if you have concerns about connecting with people due to COVID, to disregard these and throw these aside. I'm not saying that. You need to do what you need to do. However, some have become very accustomed to staying at home, and it is quite comfortable. Denise and I enjoyed our time at home on Sunday mornings, uh, even though we were on chat most of the time. Uh, and we could, uh, we could watch at, at our kitchen counter uh, here, and uh, we'd grab coffee, and we were, it was very comfortable in that. And so, uh, in whatever, however you choose, but I'm asking you to come back, because it is comfortable to be at home. And yet discipleship is work, isn't it? And at times it moves us out of our comfort zones, which we so need. And this is what the people did in Nehemiah 12, celebrating with gladness, with thanksgiving and singing. Francis Schaeffer said, when we understand our calling, it is not only true, but beautiful. And it should be exciting. If we are unexcited Christians, we should go back and see what is wrong. (laughs) Coming out of this pandemic, if the walls of your life are broken, let Jesus come and clear the wreckage and rubble of your past. Even if it's happened in the last 18 months. And prepare for restoration and for transformation into a Jerusalem, which really means a dwelling of peace. Yes, church, it is time for us together to be builders of broken walls. And that means here at Peace Portal about focusing on new ways and how we can grow and serve and share. I also want to encourage you to join a small group. It is a core part of how we connect with each other. Yes, small groups are social. However, they they so need to have a much greater purpose and to rally together on how we can grow and serve and share our faith. 
And you're going to be hearing more about that in the fall. People are desperately looking for hope, answers, and perspective. I overheard someone in the grocery store here even yesterday, and they were talking about concerns about, uh, about what was happening in the world. And uh, I remember they said, it's, it's overwhelming. I heard that word. Together, let's be the church gathered. So that's lesson number one, broken walls. How about lesson number two? Nehemiah anticipated opposition. When Nehemiah asked the king for support, he also asked for protection. And an army of officers and cavalry went with him. And as he was rebuilding the wall, he posted guards 24-7. We read that in that story. And knowing that he was being asked to focus on protection, he both prayed continually and then he tangibly acted. He prayed and then he acted. He prayed and then he acted. I love one of the greatest verses in Nehemiah. Uh, in that book is Nehemiah 2 and 4. We just read it. And then it, it is, the king said to me, what is it that you want? It's in the heat of the moment. And here he's, then I prayed to the God of heaven and then I answered the king. I prayed to the God of heaven and then I answered the king. As I have opportunity to be alongside of leaders, especially as they lead through times of change and transition, and they are in huge uh, change and transition in these days, we talk about watching out for discouragement. Because there's new opposition as they near the end of a phase or a task or a project or a journey. And when they're making progress and seeing results, there's the need to be on guard, to realign people and resources and focus on the bigger mission, because that is when there's the danger of becoming derailed. And Nehemiah knew that uh, and what he was being asked to protect, and he knew his mission. I have a question that I've been asking myself here over the summer. I also ask you, what are you being asked to protect? What is your Jerusalem? You know, I cannot answer that question for you. Only you can. You see, if you have God-given clarity and what he's asking you to do at your age, regardless of your age, what he's asking you to protect for God's kingdom, to build his kingdom, then it will give you focus. <clears throat> and be assured, you can shout with what Nehemiah says in Nehemiah 2 and 20, the God of heaven will give us success. That was the rally cry. There was another one that we'll talk about in a moment here, but the rally cry. The God of heaven will give us success. Yes, we need perspective that we are in a battle and there will be opposition. And I want that opposition because it's gonna come. I want that opposition to be external, not internal. And I want to know what my part is to help build the walls which have been fractured. I want to have a relationship with God so that in, so in the moment that when I face an issue or we face an issue, we simply do what Nehemiah did. We pray to the God of heaven and then we act. Of course, at times we're told to wait. <laughs> that actually is an action word, which comes out of hearing God's voice when we pray and hear him. So lesson two, as we are seeing progress and returning, be on guard and watch for opposition. But let's ensure that opposition is not internal. My third lesson, lesson three, Nehemiah knew that the key to success was unity. He masterfully positioned people at different places on the wall, working together so that they could see each other. And in some situations, they were grouped by families Maybe they were small groups. Who knows? And because the wall was so immense, not every person could see each other. So what did he do? He had a trumpeter, a single trumpeter, periodically blow his horn so they could all hear it. And he said, when you hear this trumpet the call, he understand and remember the rally call statement, our God will fight for us. So periodically, that trumpet would, would be sounded and they would hear it along the wall 
where they couldn't see everybody, but they would hear the trumpet and then they would say, yes, our God will fight for us. The unity of the people in the midst of all of their diversity was absolutely paramount. As we are returning, gathering, we're coming from different experiences. Not everybody has the same mindset. Some are coming back quite positive. (laughs) Some are very wary. Some are grieving. Some are new and have never been with us at Peace Portal Alliance, and I want to welcome you. Some like live streaming. Some strongly dislike it. And they're tired of Zoom. Some are very lonely. And on and on. In a recent Boomers Connect reception time, uh, it, was, it was a Zoom interview, where Denise and I were interviewing Brian and Myrna uh, Bueller, and uh, Brian and I had decided to float the question, what is the greatest challenge the local church is facing? Is it COVID? So I said, Brian, well, I'll, I'll ask you the question, and then I'll get, out of, I'll, I'll get out of the way. And Brian responded by saying, it's, it's not COVID. It is the unity of the church with different polarizing perspectives on this pandemic. And these views are strongly held, and unity is the greatest challenge coming out of this pandemic. You see, I cannot build walls when I'm not willing to respect you for what you believe and know that you respect me if I have a a, a different opinion. We as believers need to be able to differ on our opinions and yet to be unified on a common mission to glorify God. I so believe in that. And I want to hold what I believe in humility for it just might be that I'm not 100% accurate. Worship team, please come and join me as I close here. And I want to make a comment to both those who are older and those who are younger. 55 plus, we were raised in more of a black and white world. You know, it was a very different time for us than it is today. Millennials and Gen X wires, you see things quite differently than we do. And at times, I, I, I want to ask your forgiveness for how we have failed you. We may be seen by you uh, as too dogmatic. We're not open to different thinking and we're more legalistic. You see us dig our heels in and we say, this is right and this is wrong. And you question us on it. Before COVID, we arranged for a panel of four young people to meet with Boomers Connect up in the fireside room. And Denise and I interviewed them to help us who are older gain understanding and perspective on how they think and process what they believe in. It was a home run. I still have Boomers comment on that Sunday morning. And I recently asked the team of four, Would they come back and help us understand how they are processing coming out of the pandemic? Two of them have actually been married through this time. They said, we're in. We're in. And so, boomers, we're going to be scheduling them later on this fall. There is one non-negotiable. It's for me. It's as I anchor myself in what I believe and hold on to, and millennials, Gen X, Yers, whatever age are, it has to be a non-negotiable for you as well. We have to be together on this. Don't look to us and base what you believe on how you view us at times where we have failed you. If you're doing this, you are looking at the wrong side of the tapestry, for that is the wrong perspective. The non-negotiable is this question, who is Jesus? At the end of the day, at the end of your life, much of what we have hung on to will probably cause us to question why. However, there is one non-negotiable which is paramount, and that is, who do you believe Jesus is? Who is he in your life? And I ask that of you individually, and I ask of all of you online. And so will you help us? Will you help us build fractured walls? 
to have the right perspective that we're in a battle and with, we will face opposition, but our God will fight for us. And that the key to effectiveness for God is our unity. Young and old, we so need each other together. And yes, we are called by your name. Your glory, O oh Lord, your glory is what we live for individually and together. And so, Lord, we so need you. We so need you to fill us with your holy fire. If you're able, why don't you stand? Let me sing one last song. We sing. We are your people, called by your name. We humble ourselves and pray, turning from idols, running to you. Forgive our sin and heal our land. Show your power, and Lord, show your power. Exalt your great name, your kingdom come. We pray, and drive back the darkness, bring lost ones home, set captives free. To see, to see. The last verse of Nehemiah is, 
was, uh, it was Nehemiah's prayer. Remember me, O oh my God, for good. And may that be our rally cry individually and as a church. I kind of paraphrased it. Remember us here at Peace Portal Alliance, O oh our God, for good. For bringing you glory and seeing lives transformed for the kingdom. And so I close and pray over each of you from Exodus 15 and 2. The Lord is your strength. He is your song. He has become your salvation. He is your God. And together, may we praise Him and exalt Him individually and together. God bless you. Go in Him.